Hello, everyone. I am uh, Claudio Murgan, the host of the Spiritual Inspire podcast. And uh, my uh, guest uh, today is uh, Tom T. Moore. Tom is an award winning author, speaker, and is in the entertainment business, where for over 40 years he has been president and CEO of his own international motion picture and TV program distribution business based in Texas. During this time, he has traveled extensively as part of his business duties to international film markets held in Cannes, Milan, Los Angeles, and Budapest. Mr. Moore graduated with a BA in Business Administration from Texas Christian University and served in the US Army as a first lieutenant. Tom is the author of six books. The Gentle Way books provide a simple yet powerful tool for everyday use that is a giant step forward from the law of attraction and include hundreds of stories sent to Mr. Moore from all over the world from people living the gentle way. More about the books and uh, Tom's uh, initiatives, you can find at the thegentlewaybook.com. Tom, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining me today and welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me again. How's uh, everything in Toronto? Everything is, is good so far. The weather is uh, holding up. Uh, you know, the garden is blooming, which is an improvement. So that, that's very good. There we go. <laughs> So uh, since uh, we last talked, you sent me, you were very kind to send me four, uh, four of your books. Uh, First Contact, uh, the one about Lemuria and Atlantis, and the Gentle Way book uh, number two. So I had the plus the one about the, the pets. So I had the chance to uh, read all of them and we'll continue our uh, discussion. <clears throat> and I want to give you a report on my own uh, um, most benevolent uh, outcome requests because uh, usually I do, uh, I ask for a MBO at the beginning of each day. And if the day goes smoothly, then you say, yeah, you know, we could have happened without the requests uh, anyway. But there are two instances where I asked for the MBOs and um, they came forward like within minutes. And the first example is two weeks ago, long weekend in Canada, um, traveling with friends uh, in a small town, a touristic town uh, at the edge of the bay. It's usually it's very busy, uh, crowded. You cannot find a parking spot. So <clears throat> we drove around and of course no uh, spot available uh, to park in the area where we wanted to go. And three ways through the circle between the two um, streets, I asked for an uh, MBO to uh, find a parking spot. And when I was closing the circle to go back on the first street, a, a spot was empty and there were cars coming from all directions. And it was like that spot was invisible to everyone. I was mm. able to pull in no problems. So that was the first one. And a few days later, back home, uh, I wanted to uh, go and buy um, salt for the water softener. So I stopped buy at a friend to drop something for him. He asked me where you're going. <clears throat> I said, I'm going to buy uh, salt for water softener. I said, good luck with that. We, uh, there is a problem. There is a strike on, um, uh, on this, with these workers uh, that provide uh, the salt. And it took us uh, like three weeks, um, three weeks ago to, to find salt in a different town. So good luck. So I went to the first store, the closest one. They told me we sold 150 bags in one day two weeks ago. We don't know when we're going to get more. I drove to the next store. Yeah, we carried the salt, but we don't have any because of the same shortage. I went to the third one. They didn't carry. I went to the fourth one on the same street. I didn't make any other effort. Wow. Same street. And the fourth one said the same story. We used to carry it. But uh, because of the shortages and the strike, we don't have any. But the manager was there, the cashier. And she said, go 100 meters up the street. There is a water depot store. And I know the owner. And I think she has some uh, bags. Try it try there. I drove to that store. And there are 11 bags of salt waiting for me. Yeah. I bought only four. I needed only four. I drove away. I told my, my friend, you know what? If you need more salt, this is where you can find it. So I set the MBO the first, uh, mo the, the moment I stepped out of the first store. So it took maybe 20 minutes for that salt to 
or the the the, the place to materialize in the uh, pier, yes, in front of me. So it was quite unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, that's and, and back to the uh, parking. I have seen times, even just recently, where I've requested a, a benevolent outcome for a parking space, and there was someone trolling down the same uh, aisle uh, or row as uh, as I was, and they went right past it, and I pulled in. So, yeah, I mean, I encourage people to um, to ask for these uh, MBOs. In fact, I'm pushing it on my kids, and even if they don't believe me. They sometimes mm -hmm. grudgingly do it and, uh, you know, but I want to instill in them this uh, regimen of something so um, good and, yeah, it is just uh, positive. You have to yeah. do it in order and, to... And it works, it. it works great, uh, great for uh, children who are uh, studying for exams um, and, and things like that, that they... I, I've received emails from people saying that their son or daughter scored higher than even the best students in the class after requesting a MBO. So um, it, it does help them. It it's settles them down. It, it relaxes them, and they're able to think of the answers easier. Yeah. Um, just to continue our conversation from uh, last time, uh, you recently mentioned to me about a new concept, uh, octopus soul. Um, how did you come across uh, octopus soul and what exactly it is? So anyway, um, I, uh, I happened to see a, a video of, um, of an octopus in a tank thrashing around, thrashing around, and even uh, even spurting out ink and uh, and someone even in the video said that that octopus looks like it's dreaming. And so I thought, well, that's that's an interesting question to ask. So little did I know that when I ask to speak to octopus soul in my uh, meditative session, that the octopus soul would say, you know, hey, uh, humans. Uh, don't even understand about their dreams, but I can tell you that every single being in the universe dreams. And I, th I thought that was a very profound subject that I've kind of carried along. Um, you know, when you think about even um, even the the uh, the birds, the um, insects, bees, the the uh, trees, the plants, every single being in the universe dreams. And that's why I've I've been recording my dreams since 1979. And two weeks after I started recording dreams, I had this very, very vivid dream of a woman and some men being involved in a big explosion. And so my wife and I, at that time, we owned an international wholesale tour company, and we were supposed to be going to Manila for a World Congress of Travel Agents. And so we canceled Manila and added days to Hong Kong and Taipei. And uh, sure enough, on the very first uh, day of the, um, of the Congress, uh, the terrorists exploded the bomb up at the front of the hall, which is where I like to sit. I always like to sit close to the front and uh, injured 10 travel agents. And they arrested a woman that worked for the Manila uh, tourism government or something like that in Los Angeles in four men. And after that, I said, I'm going to record my dreams the rest of my life. And so I have, I, I, have gone through many uh, notebooks. I, I actually have them printed up, especially where it says, uh, uh, you know, date, place, that, and lines for me to write uh, the dreams. And I recommend to people having a pen light and um, uh, and the notebook, you know, next to your bedside, so that you can record them in the middle of the night if you have a partner. Of course, you can go to the bathroom and 
and record the dreams and, uh, so you won't forget them. Yes, I mean, we touched on, on this on our first interview as well. And uh, um, it, it's not easy for, for everyone because even if the, the, the dream is profound, um, when we wake up, if again, if it's not a lucid dream, when we wake up, it's just fragments we can remember from the dream. And sometimes, uh, even if you see the action in your mind, you cannot find words for, for what exactly happened. It's like you are being forbidden to write yeah. down the experience from a different realm. It's quite oh, I, interesting. Yes, I struggle. Uh, as long as I've been doing it, I still struggle with some of the images because you're, uh, you're combining past lives, future lives, uh, present lives. You're combining, uh, you know, each of our lives has 12 parallel lives. And so you're, uh, you're looking in on these other parallel lives. Some are, are better, some are worse, depending because we're on timeline six, the middle frequency. And uh, so the, the timelines below us have harder lives and the timelines above us have easier lives. So. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, last time we touched on Lemuria and Atlantis, but I would like to go a little bit uh, deeper. Do you think that they will um, resurface, not necessarily in our lifetime, but in the thousands of years after we, we are gone, do you think these two continents will resurface and life will restart on, on these lands? The Earth experiment, I'm told, is going to end, <clears throat> excuse me, in 7,000 years. And so after we leave, um, the Earth will re return to its pristine condition and it will be a tourist des destination for all the other beings in our universe and even other um, universes. So that's that's going to be great. I mean, we're we're considered the the crown jewel of creator's creation. So and creator loves variety, and that's and that's what we have on this planet is a huge amount of variety. Yeah. So in the so in other words, you are not sure if this particular. Um, let's say continents will, will resurface, but are you aware of the eye of Atlantis? Oh, you mean as far as Atlantis and Lemuria? Yes, yeah. I don't, well, I won't say no. Uh, I'd, I'd be surprised if they do, but, um, you know, uh, Gaia has her own plans for, for the Earth. Uh, she's a, a quantum master, and I ask, well, how, how many quantum masters are there in this universe? And she said, oh, you can count them on one hand. And, and so I asked, well, are they planets? And she said, well, they're, you know, a variety of uh, planets and, and suns or whatever. So um, there aren't too many quantum masters in our, in, in our universe. And we're lucky to have this uh, beautiful soul, um, you know, that, that, takes care of Earth and all the 12, the 12 Earths all at the same time, which is, when you think about it, amazing. And, uh, and, and all the souls involved in the Earth experiment. Yes. Tom, are you aware of the Eye of the Sahara, which is uh, on the west side of um, the African continent, and it mimics the main city of Atlantis? What but have you asked about this in, in the past? I have, and I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that was several years ago, and I cannot remember what all I, I received. Keep in mind, everyone, uh, you can go to www.thegentlewaybook.com and click on, on articles and news. And I have archived all of my new, uh, free newsletters there all the way from 2007, all the way to the present time. And there's a search box up in, in the right-hand corner, and you can enter uh, the Sahara thing and see what I've received on it so far. Because I think I asked two or three different times about it. Um, okay. I just can't. I just ask. I, I've asked over 30,000 
questions in, a, in these meditative sessions, and I just <laughs> can't remember unless somebody prompts me in advance or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll do this, search because it's uh, quite an interesting uh, phenomenon there, and uh, there are tons of uh, hypotheses, uh, hypotheses about the uh, the the place. Yeah. Yeah. I will mention that on the coast of Spain, there has been another place in the sort of marshlands that they've discovered, and it looks like they they've hypothesis hypothesis. I'm saying that word wrong. Uh, that uh, that it might have been um, the the main city of uh, of uh, Atlantis, one of the, or the main city, and um, uh, I was told that it's like well, as an example in in Arkansas, they've made a a duplicate of the um, National Congress building, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, smaller, and that's sort of what they did uh, when they they made that city off. The, uh, and at that time, the waters were much lower. And so they they made sort of a copycat, but just on a smaller size than what's called the Golden City. Um, uh, and <laughs> Aaron is here. And, well, anyway, yeah. uh, Poseidon, there we go. Uh, trying to remember the name. Uh, Posadia and Aaron and five little small islands below um, Aaron were all that was mostly left. There were some other uh, islands scattered about the Atlantic Ocean that were left when when Atlantis had a, a huge um, uh, disaster with the, all the volcanoes blowing up and most of the continent sank and the waters rose. 162 feet, I think it was. So that was the the first out of three major uh, rises in the in the waters of the of the world. Yes, I mean what you've said is, does make sense that uh, people could um, create or build replicas of uh, cities they admire. It's like uh, you mentioned about the the building of the Congress. So, yeah, that's a possibility. And with uh, regarding the volcanoes, uh, I mean, there are studies showing that they are underground, underwater volcanoes uh, in Antarctica, I think, and they are blowing up right now. This is what heats up the, the water and makes the um, <clears throat> ice uh, melt. Uh, and this creates the whole phenomena, which a lot of people think it's climate change based on what we do. And again, I repeated many times, I know we pollute, I know we destroy ecosystems, I know we do a lot of uh, harm to the environment, that's for sure, I cannot be contested. Uh, but the scale the, the Earth is changing right now uh, is not due to us, but different other phenomena which we cannot uh, impact in any way or, or change. I mean, we know that this uh, man-made weather in various parts of the world but also with the sun and geomagnetic field and all these um, atmospheric changes, there is nothing we can do at this point. Right. And, uh, and Atlant the continent of Atlantis um, uh, was on top of the mid-Atlantic ridge. And so there were a line of volcanoes uh, right on top of that, that pressure zone. And they all decided... <laughs> Uh, to blow up at the same time, which broke a con uh, uh, apart the continent, which is why it's no longer there. And people, of course, continue to speculate to this day, did Atlantis really exist? Yes, it did. Um, had several million people living on the continent when uh, when the disaster happened, because they uh, the continent was was inhabited by Homo sapiens, starting 60,000 years ago. Yes. Same with Lemuria, or Mu, as it's called. Yeah, and for those who want to read uh, the whole story, and in fact, questions uh, Tom asked about uh, these two continents, uh, you can find them in his uh, book, Lemuria and Atlantis, if you visit his uh, website, thegentlewaybook.com. There we go. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> exactly. So very interesting uh, 
read. Um, Tom, since we last talked, a lot of events happened uh, all over the world from, uh, you know, political and uh, um, natural and all kinds of um, earth-shaking, let's <laughs> use a pan, earth-shaking events. Um, and the recent ones are, you know, in, in Canada with uh, the fires and some people say that they, this normal is that time of the year. But in Quebec, there are 53 fires starting at the same time we, we saw the, the <clears throat> radar. Uh, and that's quite unusual to uh, not to be a man-made um, activity. So right. have you asked questions about these fires, about the uh, what, what, what's going on in, in Canada and US at this point from yes, this perspective? I, of course, I think the total at one point, I don't know, you know what the current total is, there was 560 fires in Canada uh, all going on at the same time. And I'm told that this is going to continue for the next couple of years. That that obviously when the rains and the snows come, um, that will that will stop it, but they're going to spring up again. And why it's it's just for two years, I don't know. Maybe maybe all the forests will have burned by by then and and they'll all be in new growth. But uh, uh, but Gaia has these fires to um, uh, to generate new growth, and and it's part of the cycles of of life. Yes. At the same time, again, there are rumors saying that these fires are uh, being started intentionally just to um, put more fear into us and highlight the, the agenda of climate change. Because without these type of fires in a awkward time of the year, people will still be relaxed and they, they won't uh, believe it. But when the push uh, is done, then and they will feel the smoke in the air, they will take a different type of initiative. So yeah. we'll see how, how the masses will, will react and what's going to happen. But um, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll turn into a positive uh, vibe. Yep. You'll come out, just take a couple more years. So um, we'll see what happens. So also, can we consider what's going on right now as Gaia's journey through through the universe, as her own story, writing her own story, uh, her own journey? And we are just, you know, uh, coming along in, in this amazing uh, adventure. Uh, okay. Uh, again, we're all part of the, the Earth experiment. Uh, Gaia, um, when, when she came to this universe, the universe was just starting out. Um, it, it's, it sort of confirms in a way uh, the idea of the Big Bang Theory, except it was like a small bang. Um, a, a creator started out with only several hundred um, uh, galaxies and so I would call it a small bang, but but it did start it. And all all these galaxies were all very compressed together. And and Gaia uh, came along from another universe. There are trillions of creators and trillions of universes. And and creator, uh, she said that creator saw that she was interested in becoming a quantum uh, master, and so. And so creator told her, well, you need to go through all of these galaxies I have so far and understand why the souls that were attracted to uh, to ensoul the suns, to ensoul the planets around the suns and, and so on, why they they chose uh, that particular galaxy. Because another thing that creator has told me is that Every single galaxy, and there are trillions of galaxies now in our universe, every single one is different from all the others. Now, that's amazing. How can that be? But but that's what I'm told. All these galaxies are different. So, so it took her millions of years to go through these different galaxies 
she was installing an asteroid that was about two miles wide, and but she had control so she could direct it one left or right or up or down or whatever. And and she went through all these galaxies uh, through millions of years, um, uh, uh, getting to understand uh, uh, about all the, the souls that in, inhabit these different galaxies. And I assume the galaxies themselves, along with probably, you, you know, uh, you know, the people, uh, you know, that like to ask constant questions. She probably was in uh, creator's ear <laughs> most of the time of this whole process asking questions. So, and I, I will mention that anyone uh, can can communicate with creator. Creator has told me that creator can have trillions of conversations all going on at the same time. That's why I like to call this being creator as compared to God, because in a way, you know, due to all of our um, previous religious trainings, I would call it, um, we we think uh, there are, in a way, limits to to uh, to God, but this Creator, there's no limits, and and Creator has said, you can communicate with me. Just ask to talk to me. You can even ask me the most trivial questions. I don't mind. I welcome uh, people uh, communicating with me and asking questions. So. Yes, in, in a way, religion is a box. It's boxing us. It's putting us in a box and yes. um, forces Absolutely. us not to think anything else but at the edge of the, the box. And I think our and then from there, our mind cannot comprehend what you just said, that there are trillions of galaxies and planets and everything else, because we are stuck here due to gravitation. And then we have asked the question, what exactly keeps all the other trillions of galaxies in balance? What Im immense, inimaginable force keeps everything together? And it's just unbelievable and if in, even if you think of our bodies which is the microcosm then you realize how complex everything is outside our planet right because to balance all the functionalities in our body to know when to digest the food when to have the white cells doing their job when you have the synapses doing their job and it's such a finite and minute detail in everything our body is is working uh, that is it's beyond our comprehension right and and when i've talked to these souls that inhabit uh like octopus soul or or crow soul or dog soul or cat soul or whatever um they you know they go into detail and um uh, just as as uh, and some of these I have in, in the book here, The Gentle Way with Pets. Um, they, um, they go into detail about how Creator came to them and they were the highest level in vibrational level soul on their planet. And they were asked to take part in the Earth experiment. And they were thrilled uh, uh, to take part. And, and, they they were able, the creator gave them, of course, this is all taking part in milliseconds. Um, what uh, creator had an idea for what their work or their position uh, would be um, in this experiment. And, and they were able to commun communicate back to creator and suggest things. And so... It was not all one-way street. Uh, they there was communication back and forth, just a lot, a lot faster than we can do it. So um, it it really gives you a sense of the magnificence of this creation when you start thinking about it. And by the way, this universe, they uh, scientists only so far 
think it's like 15.2 billion years old, I think, or something like that. And actual, in actuality, it's 25 billion years old. But uh, the nice thing, at, at least we'll get closer with this James Webb uh, telescope. It's going to reach even farther and farther out. I just saw in the last couple of months, uh, you know, someone published a, a little tiny um, light that was another galaxy, and they were just amazed how far out that must be. So they're going to uh, eventually conclude that the uh, the universe is 20 billion years old, but still it's 25. So that's a, you know a long time. And again, because we're uh, our universe is is part of trillions. There are three other universes that are next to ours, two of which we can't see because they're on the far side of the universe, but one we can see in the night sky, and eventually the uh, James Webb Telescope will see that there's this void um, several mile, a million miles wide, and this void is, is between... Uh, our universe and the other universe next to it. And based on your uh, knowledge, have they, those from the other universe, did they travel to ours uh, so far or they don't know about us? It's not. And even, um, even we've traveled, and I say we, um, there's been travel to like the, this next, the closest universe that we can see. And uh, I was told that um, uh, that universe is so different from ours that they're all, you know, they're all different. But but I was told, Tom, if you if you look at those galaxies, and all, they're completely different than our galaxies. And and what they found when they visited, I guess, one or more planets there that the, there's just this enormous difference between creations. So maybe we are lucky enough to reincarnate on one of those uh, planets in a different galaxy. Not that we are going to remember anything from, from the Earth in order to make a comparison, but at least will be a different, uh, different experience. Yeah. And, and Tom, you know, you mentioned uh, your connection with the, the creator and the fact that uh, each of us can, can do that. So that's why I, I have these interviews because I want to encourage people to go, go inside and, and find the, that connection with the creator themselves and uh, tap into the, the beauty of what's in, in the darkness. Uh, when I say darkness, when it's the darkness of when we close our eyes, the darkness of, of our mind where the, the beauty comes, where the colors comes, where the messages are being uh, sent to us is that the positive darkness in inside us not the, the other one right. so it's beautiful that you you mentioned that you have this particular connection and there are so many uh like you who are, are doing this um, job beautifully well I'm, I'm told that part of my soul contract is to encourage people to meditate in the future i'm told everybody will meditate with maybe tiny, tiny portion, not, but but everybody's going to meditate. And it's it's not that hard. You just put yourself into a light um, alternate state, and then you just say, you know, I'd like to speak to Gaia, or I'd like to speak to Creator, or I'd like to speak to my guardian angel. Um, guardian angels are nice to start with because these are golden light beings um, that – are in charge of us. They take care of hundreds of thousands of people all at the same time because they're they're these ancient souls that um, uh, Creator asked to um, uh, to take care of us. And um, uh, and your guardian angel is your best friend. So uh, your guardian angel is with you in every single one of your lives on Earth, which are all going on at the same time, which is 
a little hard for people to initially comprehend, shall we say. Yes, it needs practice. And as uh, my uh, previous guest said, diligence. I had um, Philip Montrose uh, the other day. The interview will be uh, posted uh, in, on Sunday. And um, he drew a card from a deck. And it was the second time he, on the same day he drew out the same card, diligence. So we need diligence in what we do, especially on the spiritual path, in order to, to see results. So don't give up. That's right. Don't, uh, don't give up. And, and I was as surprised as everyone. Um, you know, the first time I was able to communicate in 2005, and I wasn't a young guy then. So, um, uh, you know, I, I went to a Dick Sutton seminar in Sedona, and I decided to uh, try and contact a uh, Indian shaman that had been channeled for me by Robert Shapiro um, a couple of years before. And uh, and, and so when when uh, uh, Dick put us under to try and automatic write, instead I said, uh, reveals the mysteries, are you there? And he said, Yes, I am, Tom. And I said, oh, wow, this is great. And that's that's how it started. Um, I, I communicated with him. It turned out that uh, Reveals the Mysteries um, is one of my soul group or cluster, as they're called. Uh, there are eight fragments of our soul having lives on Earth and re Reveals the Mysteries. Um, I was an Indian shaman in the 1600s. And... He's also my main guide because each of us have a main guide along with our guardian angel and uh, what we call the guardian angels or golden light beings. And then other guides that come and go, um, like when my wife and I owned that international tour company, uh, I had a couple of guides that helped with that. And when I started our international film distribution business, I added a couple of guides there. When I started writing uh, articles and books, I, I added on a couple of, of writer guides. Yeah, interesting. And because you mentioned Sedona, I had a couple of uh, guests recently which are living in Sedona, and one is a um, Toltec uh, shaman. Have you had any other amazing experiences there when visiting the, uh, visit the vortexes or anything special you can you can mention oh i i could go on <laughs> um the uh, uh, uh i think it was about the first time that we went there with a group of friends um there was three couples and so us three guys um or we three guys climbed up to the top of Bell Rock. And Bell Rock is a very famous place. You can Google it and see what it looks like. It's it, We climbed all the way up to the top of Bell Rock, and then we decided to do a meditation. And during the meditation, I fell into the rock. It, it was the strangest feeling I've ever had. And when I came out of it, when we descended, I could not wear my prescription driving glasses I, I had to drive without uh, without glasses, and ever ever since then, up until maybe very recent times, I did not need glasses to to watch uh, uh, go to a theater with. So I mean that was one. Um, I've uh, uh, one night on that very same trip, my wife woke up, and there were there were lights hanging over my body. And so I've asked about that since, and I was told I was being prepared for this work, whatever, whatever, whatever that means. And um, and then I also saw my first UFO. Uh, we we ate dinner at the very famous Enchantment Resort. Uh, you can you don't have to stay there in order to have dinner. And uh, so we were out on the patio watching the sun go down, and uh, uh, so after dinner, everybody got uh, up but me. I was the uh, uh, stay there to um, guard the table so that they wouldn't take it, 
everything away. And uh, while everybody went to the restroom or take photos, and lo and behold, there came a, a UFO right out of Boynton Canyon, uh, and it looked like it was headed directly for the airport, which was up on a mesa in Sedona. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, but it wasn't blinking lights like a normal plane. I, I, I had a private pilot's license at one time, so I knew what that was supposed to look like. And it was just a solid light going across, and then suddenly it just disappeared. So, yeah, unfortunately, I suppose. I, I mean, I wanted to be in Sedona in June. Uh, I mean, last month, but unfortunately, it didn't pan out. So uh, um, yeah. I know the events and everything will be arranged in such a way that I'll be there at the right time. I don't worry. Before uh, you go, <clears throat> be sure to uh, to uh, contact me. I'll give you some some good places to go. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, uh, Tom. In order for us to move forward as as people, as humans, we need three things: water, food, and electricity. Right now, we I think we cannot go back to the ways we used to live without electricity. We'll go mad in a matter of days, you know, without, you know, flushing a toilet, getting water from the faucet, uh, turning on the the lights in the house. We'll get mad. Kids won't be able to play on their computers, you know. Uh, And last time we touched on, lightly, on on some of the technologies that might come to fruition. Um, do you have any updates on these three elements? Because, you know, food right now is becoming scarce, uh, even if people don't want to acknowledge the food supply chain is being destroyed. Uh, Delta of um, pesticides spread all over uh, countries like Canada, US, there are accidents, you know. Um, and food uh, is being, uh, sorry, water is being polluted. Um what what do you think? Well, I keep being told that there's going to be a free energy machine released this year. Now, um, there have been um, excuse me, there have been um, what I'm told are backup machines just in case uh, this free energy machine is is not released for whatever reason. Uh, I, I know in, in the last month or six weeks, I received a, a call again from someone um, on the East Coast, I'll say. Uh, I won't narrow it down. <laughs> Who lives in the woods, but very off, you know, off, off, the, off the grid. Off the grid. Yeah, yeah, off the grid. And he has designed a um, a free energy machine and uh, he has finally decided that he would probably release it to the world with no patent. Uh, I'm told in one of my sessions that there are a couple things wrong with it that need to be corrected, but that's one of those backup machines. And um, uh, in my newsletters, as people have come up with these, with other free energy machines, but they they want to go the path of, oh, I'm gonna make a billion dollars off of this. And and uh, uh, that's not the way to go because, because the free energy machines that have come along in the past, say, 50 or 60 years, they've been bought up by oil companies and and just hidden. Uh, you know, so that uh, they can continue to make billions of dollars in in oil profits. Um, that's going to come to an end. I do know uh, Dr. Stephen Greer has advertised uh, continually for for people that would come up and not expect. You know, they they're willing to give them some money, uh, but not expect uh, to have a funnel for a, a cash inflow and by uh, releasing their free energy machine without a patent. And that's going to happen. Somebody's going to do it. I hope, I hope it's this year. Um, uh, I hope it 
it hasn't been delayed because uh, somebody is trying to keep someone from from releasing uh, that free energy machine. Of course, I'm told when that happens, obviously within a couple of years, everybody will be able to build one. Supposedly, it'll be fairly simple. And, you know, everybody is going to start having energy, whether they're a little old um, village in Africa or wherever, everyone's going to have energy. Uh, there's also been a, another major breakthrough that I had in my newsletter. You can look up HUC enzyme. And, and supposedly this enzyme can take air and turn it into re- electricity. And I'm told by Gaia that that's a, a major development of the of this century, and it's it's going to be big, big, big. So there are things coming along that they can't they can't stop. There's just too many too many of these free energy type devices that are going to be around. Yeah, thank you for uh, for the update. Yes, and now with the financial st- system crashing down and all the other systems uh, being down to their knees. We we need something positive. We need this type of energy devices and alternative ways of um, um, producing food because right now you really don't know what, what you eat if you buy something from the store. Uh, you know, fake meat, bugs, um, all kind of crappy stuff which um, pretty much is poison for our bodies. So we need yeah. to be very careful. <clears throat> Absolutely, there. So, and and hopefully, all these devices they're coming up with, it's it's going to be a landslide. We'll see. Something else, uh, you know, I just will mention to your uh, uh, viewers. Um, supposedly, by the end of this month, and this is this is um, not something that I've you know, really ask about, although I've generally I've asked and, and there's going to be a, a lot of these secrets are going to be coming out, but there are two congressmen in the United States, one by the name of Burchette and the other one by the name of Gallagher, and they're going to start holding congressional hearings at the end of this, at the end of this month, which is pretty fast, where they're going to start Um, interviewing whistleblowers about uh, these crash uh, retrievals of extraterrestrial craft and and how they're trying to back engineer them. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that came out of it is is that, uh, and I've read this two or three places, uh, including Dr. Greer's website and, and a couple of others, they keep talking about this guy that went in one of these crashed um, ET craft, and I'll t- talk about how it was it was taken down. And when he went inside, this this ET craft was only thirty feet wide. And uh, but when he went inside, he said it, it was as big as a football field, and he got very um, disoriented and and even nauseous. And had to come out. Well, I'm told uh, by Antura, my uh, uh, ET buddy, that that these craft that are 30 feet wide are actually only 150 feet wide inside because you're going from the four negative energies on the outside to the 10 positive energies on the inside, and it expands it uh, inside to like 150 feet but not 300 feet, okay? And the other thing, well, I said, okay, um, your mothership is, uh, you've told me in the past, is three miles wide, 20 stories tall with 11 decks. So is is your mothership um, uh, the same inside uh, uh, with the 10 positive energies? And he said, oh, Tom, you know, um, it's roomy. That was the first thing. <laughs> roomy. And, and, and then he said, then I came back the next time and 
and ask again. He said, I, I knew you were going to come back and ask that. <laughs> and he said, uh, I said, well, is it like nine to 12 miles um, uh, inside? And he said, uh, he, he said, yes, uh, at least that. I'm saying, oh, at least that. And so the next time I said, okay, um, is it larger than that? He said, Tom, we don't want to go any farther than that because if I do, he said, you're okay with accepting the idea that it's larger than that inside, but there will be some of your readers that will be frightened and we don't want them to be frightened. So using, and, and I, this is me figuring out, not not him telling me, using that analogy of the 30 feet being 150 feet, it would be, it would seemingly be the, the three miles would be 15 miles in wide inside. So um, that's, a, he says, it, you know, it's a, a small city and yeah. you can understand they want to have a lot of space when, when there, um, there are 1500 people on, uh, on board that uh, mothership from uh, from 37 different planets, and they live their whole lives on board that that spaceship. So uh, I'm sure they need a lot of room. So in fact, they've already implemented the 15 year year light cities. We are trying to implement 15 minutes cities. They implemented 15 year light cities because they travel back and forth and you said they spend most of their lives there so oh yeah <clears throat> and uh, and they and i ask well for the earth experiment since uh, they are doing all these scientific uh readings 24 hours a day uh, of, of these four negative energies i said how many of your crew members are involved on the deck where they have to have the scout ships go out, the drones go out, and there's different kinds of drones. There's the tic tac kind of drones. There are the little ball drones, and and, uh, and they're all taking millions of readings. That's their scientific job is to take millions of readings a day. And he said there's there's a, a hundred crew members that are on that deck working, obviously. There's a uh, hundred uh, crew members assigned to that duty. Maybe there's only fifty on and fifty off, or something like that. But they're they're there working every single day. Yeah, I mean, you have my address. Give them, to, give it to them. They can visit. I can show them my garden. Take them yeah. around. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love to. And uh, but you know, there are all these corporations that are trying to. Uh, say, oh, we don't know what they are. Uh, they're a danger uh, to us. And, you know, they've been around since the start of, of our planet, uh, at the start of the Earth experiment. So they've been here for millions of years, taking all these scientific readings and videoing. You know, they've, they've got videos of the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnons and the dinosaurs and all that stuff. So they've they've really documented much more than we can understand because they they have scientific things they can do that we have not discovered yet. And so they've been around all this time. And and so we're, you know, they're they're not a danger to us. They're just doing their job, uh, what creator wanted them to do to understand these four negative energies, which the rest of our universe, which is 10 positive energies and all the trillions of other universes, they're all 10 positive energies too. So we're, we're part of the earth experiment. Yeah. We're the explorers. Again, our lovely governments trying to keep us in fear. That's the only thing, normal thing daily. Because the behavior. corporations want to make <clears throat> billions and trillions of dollars. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, even look at something like the Ukrainian war. I mean, they're just making money hand over fist in, uh, in producing weapons. So, um, you know, that's, yeah. that's part, part of what they do. Yeah. Tom, you live in Texas. So you are exposed to the 
migration that's happening at the U.S. Uh, at the southern border. Mm-hmm. And recently, uh, Sound of Freedom was released, a movie that exposes the um, CELT, uh, the uh, child sex trafficking networks. Yeah, my, um, my uh, daughter and son-in-law have seen that. I haven't had a chance to. It, it's very powerful. Has try, it has been tried to be. Uh, they tried to suppress the the movie. Now the MSN uh, is the, the media. The mainstream media is all over to um, uh, throw mud at the, the movie, saying that something like this doesn't exist. <clears throat> um, have you ever asked the question about if this type of uh, human trafficking will end anytime soon? Well. Not that it'll end anytime soon, but that there will be more and more of these pedophile, pedophilia uh, rings that will be exposed, even in places like Washington, D.C. I understand there's at least two or three uh, there, and I'm sure there's, you know, many across, um, you know, across the United States and, and probably Toronto and so on. So, um, uh, you know, that's, yeah, I know it will end. It's just that probably films like, like the documentary you just mentioned um, will aid in, in slowly but surely getting rid of it. Yeah. In the U.S. Congress, there are numbers uh, mentioned about like 85,000 children missing, crossing the border and then missing. No ID, nothing. They're just taken away. And mm-hmm. if you ask the Homeland Security or the Department of Justice, those guys, they are clueless. I mean, they maybe they know what happened, but they don't want to share anything. And they are right. very distressing. Very. Tom, so, are you still in uh, We can all, always request, a, a, say a benevolent prayer out loud. Uh, for all, for all the children uh, to be reunited with their families and and uh, released from captivity. Yes, that's for sure. <clears throat> Are you still in contact with uh, Antura, and have you received any updates regarding your trip? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, on a on a weekly basis, and and I'm told it's. They keep saying soon, 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 and um, uh, and I didn't put it in my newsletter. Uh, <laughs> I had some choice words for Antura uh, <laughs> last time I talked to him. You know, hey, mm-hmm. you know, basically I was saying let's let's get it on. And he keeps saying, you know, it's got to be convenient for you um, uh, because uh, the the camera equipment and all the equipment that you need to uh, to come up here because we're it's going to be a four camera shoot. Um, all these cameras have to be available for you to rent, and so you know is that because now we're we got the SAG AFRA uh, uh, thing going on, and and so that's going to stop all uh, basically all uh, filming. Maybe that that's what they needed to happen. I don't know. And and it he said it has to be convenient for us too. Well, gosh, make it convenient for you. <laughs> Let's get this thing on. I'm I'm ready. Yeah. Feast on the table now. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's more or less what I said. <laughs> Tom, we are approaching the end of uh, the interview, and uh, like every time, <clears throat> I give my guest uh, the option to have uh, some uh, closing thoughts. Oh, closing thoughts. Well, one, I'd love to see more people um, uh, do a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, go to my website, www.thegentlewaybook.com. Sign up for my free newsletter. It's free. Um, it's my gift to the world. And um, uh, so love to have more people sign up for that. Um, and I've, I've got this petition going on right now 
uh, called Guns for Groceries. And uh, you can go tinyurl.com forward slash guns dash groceries dash. Uh, <laughs> what did I forget? Guns for Guns for Groceries. Okay. Um, and uh, basically it's to it's to lower the number of guns that are out there. And it's something that would have bilateral support. It just needs more people involved in getting it done. It's, it's another tiny step, but it is at least a step as compared to all this talk, 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 talk. Oh yeah, we need to do this. We need to do that. But nothing gets done because, because it requires somebody to do something. And my petition doesn't require anybody to do anything. It's all volunteer. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. Uh, thank you for all your initiatives, for your work, and for the time you, you spend with me and the other um, hosts like, like myself to share your wisdom and uh, the news. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And to my guests and uh, viewers, thank you for watching. Share it, like it. Uh, download a free copy of my book when you visit my website. And until next time, love and gratitude.